Hello, this is the new Netracell game mode. Currently I have done 4 out of 5 of these and I've come up with like a little build um, showing off the new Archon Shards. So it's like a showcase of the new Archon Shards and what you can do with them and how powerful they are as well as a little build guide on how to easily do the Netracell game mode. The Netracell game mode is one of the highest level missions that you can do in the game. I'm having immense fun with it. It's very difficult sometimes. Uh, this build makes it a lot easier. There's a lot of cool stuff in this build that I can try and showcase to you as well as the new Archon Shards. So to keep it short and simple, I'll just show you the what the Archon Shards that I have at the moment are. So as you can see, I have two Emerald Archon Shards. I don't like to take my Archon Shards off of Warframes because they are usually build dependent. So I don't mix and match very often. But as of this video, I've only just unlocked Tier 3. I've unlocked the Helminth. Uh, upgrade segment I have rushed that build and I have my hands on the new uh, merge Archon shards so with the green one they do a lot of stuff around toxin and corrosive and when you think about toxin and corrosive you think Sarin so the first thing I did was I looked at the increased max stacks of corrosion status by plus two I looked at how to get that plus past a hundred percent so normally corrosive at 10 stacks does 80% of armor if you get um, two uh, of these Archon Shards, they don't need to be Tau Forged or anything like that. Just two basic ones, that will get you above 100%. And that is the only thing I've done with these so far. And it is immensely powerful, especially on Sarin. Uh, caveat to that is, it works on guns that you use. It's not just Warframe ability dependent. So you could slap this with any Warframe and your guns that do Corrosive will also strip enemy armor. It is insanely strong. It's how it used to be. Um, a long time ago there was corrosive used to just strip enemy armor straight up uh, they removed that for balancing issues and now they've brought it back into the game through Archon Shards it's very strong if I had any more I would very easily take the gain 10% ability damage on enemies affected by corrosion status I would take all, all, four, of, all four of these buffs if I could fit them I would take them they, they are all very very strong so I'll onto the builds I'll show you everything that I'm using right now the caveat to my builds are I'm using a lot of end game stuff uh, a lot of I'm using a helmet ability I'm using primed mods I'm using arcanes I'm using all end game stuff it is an end game mission so I'm not gonna try and make a budget build uh, I could probably do that another another time but this is this is end game stuff I'm using all the late game items and everything that you can use so this is my siren build um, it's a bit weird. You can probably see that I'm using brief respite and uh, adaptation. Normally, you use either raw. You either build for health or you build for shields. The problem with that is that in the Netracell level, just like the uh, Orokin uh, Void Derelict missions, they require you to take a debuff, and those debuffs usually mean you're taking a bleed proc, which adaptation deals with very well, or you're taking um, damage from movement or casting abilities. You need to be able to heal. Um, so adaptation helps with the procs. Brief respite is for normal uh, survivability. Equilibrium there is just to keep funneling you energy because you're going to need to be spending loads of energy. Uh, this is quite a high cost uh, Sarin build. Prime Sure Footed obviously is very good because you just, uh, provides knock, uh, knockdown resistance. Uh, I'm built for range. Uh, and a little bit of strength. I'm getting a little bit of strength of Malt, malt Augmented, uh, which gives me uh, strength, which gets me to about... 190 or 180 um, and that really allows um, spores and miasma to do a bit more damage uh, it's not really necessary because you're using it mainly for the armor strip and you're using your weapons I have subsumed gloom onto sarin so I'm using gloom instead of malt the reason why I'm using gloom is it provides lifesteal and it's a really good CC tool um, when you can when you're a level 200 plus you can easily get killed very very quickly so Gloom allows you to slow the enemies down. On top of that, it gives you a nice heal, which is a good answer for some of the uh, Netracell debuffs that you get on one of the keys. That a lot of the keys uh, make you take damage. So taking Gloom is a really good thing here over Molt. You can probably take, take Molt because Molt also just heals you. Um, I just think Gloom is more practical of an ability. Plus I'm built for range, so it just works really nicely. Um, I know that you don't need Archon Continuity, 
but it's red, so it looks cool, and I can afford it, so I've put it on the build. You don't actually need Archon Continuity. You can Normal Continuity is completely fine. Uh, the caveat, obviously, is Archon Continuity doesn't actually work with Sarin. It only works with Malt, and I've taken Malt off, so really, you can just use Prime Continuity here. There is no difference. Um, it's just red, and it looks cool. That's the only reason it's on there. My main weapon that I'll be using is the Sancti Magistar, and I'm using Arcane Fury, but anything can go in that slot. Uh, any arcane that you want you could even take arcane energize if you could afford it and and swap out equilibrium for something i just think equilibrium is more practical it allows you to get more energy than arcane energize so really i would rather take equilibrium and then use arcane fury or any other arcane but for my main weapon for this build will be a melee weapon uh, to try out the new ten archai stuff so I've taken Arcane Fury in that slot, but that is a free slot. You can use whatever you want for it. For my primary weapon, I'm using the Burst on Prime in its incarnate form. This thing absolutely destroys everything. It is so disgusting and it is so fun to use. It's, it, I really like the Incarnans. They, they have revived a lot of the old weapons. Um, they've changed them, so they're not even like what they used to be, but they are so strong. Um, so I'm using the Burst in here. I take this over something like the Torrid or a Dread or anything like that. It's it's just purely because it's so fast fire rate and you can inflict so much status with it so quickly. So I have two builds for you here. I have the Corrosive build. You don't need this. You can, because Sarin does such good blanket armor strip, um, usually it is so good. Um, you don't need to take Corrosive. I do just take one Corrosive weapon, however. Um, just for that one scenario where you've run into an enemy and they, they aren't armor stripped and you can just armor strip them instantly yourself with a weapon. Um, this weapon has punch through which is very useful in the Netracell game mode. There is so many tight uh, tunnels you can you maximize your punch through with it and it is just really strong. It's a very standard build um, but it is so strong for this game mode. This is the viral build for it if you're not taking the corrosive which you don't need these weapons um i will just put here you don't need them you can use anything in these slots these are up to you uh, entirely this is just a little inspiration this is my little build that i'm using you can use whatever you want but this is the viral build for the burst and prime uh not that much different i've sacrificed some punch through for some health damage and that's pretty much it once again, for my secondary uh, item, I'm using a, an Incarnum pistol, the uh, Lato Vandal. It is very, very strong. Um, again, especially in the Netracell game mode, a lot of enemies clump together, and the Incarnum form for this allows um, damage to spread in a radial attack. Um, I think it's on headshot. It might not be on headshot, but it is really strong. So I'm using secondary Encumber here uh, to apply loads of status effects and just amplify that damage. And you instantly one-shot most of the enemies with this gun. It also spreads those statuses around, uh, around and does a lot of uh, shared damage to a lot of things nearby. Again, it's just a really useful health damage uh, weapon. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the build. There's not much going on there. Again, I'm using a Riven. It's just what I had. If you don't like this, the Lex Prime is just as good. Uh, there, you know, a Kuvanukor, Tenet Cycron, anything. There's a anything in this uh, slot can go, but this is just my little pick. Now then, onto the melee weapon. Why would you use the Sancti Magistar? There are tons of melee weapons in the game. You could use a Glaive Prime. You could use Venka Prime. You could use Nikana Prime. You could use anything that does slash because you got, don't have to deal with armor. Why would you use the Sancti Magistar? A weapon that struggles to do any statuses whatsoever, it, it's, it's, you know, it's a giant hammer. That's pretty much it. It's a giant fucking hammer. It's fun to use. That's exactly why I use it. This build here is a very weird build. Um, my Riven does 200% crit chance, 200% damage. So it acts sort of like a pressure point and also a sacrificial steal at the same time. So this thing... On hit, on a heavy attack, already deals a red crit. It's super fun. Um, I'm using two of the new mods, the Tenokai mods, the Discipline's Merit and the uh, Master's Edge. Um, the Discipline's Merit enables me to uh, use Tenokai. Tenokai is the new on hit um, attack thing where it props up on screen, you heavy attack, and it doesn't consume any of your heavy attack, uh, doesn't consume any of your combo count. So it enables you, in essence, to keep combo count high and enables you to heavy attack at the same time. Um, it's 
pretty disgusting, to be honest. Uh, the reason why I use Discipline's Merit and not the other Tenokai mod um, is because uh, Dreamer's Wrath is because Discipline's Merit is very good because I know when it's coming. Um, I'm very familiar with the Sanctum Magistrate. It's my favourite weapon. I use it all the time. It's so fun to use, and I'm very familiar with its animation, so I know roughly when Discipline Merit's going to proc, um, whereas Dreamer's Wrath is inconsistent. It does give you extra damage, um, but I do prefer Discipline's Merit. Um, Master's Edge, just for extra damage. Anything can go in this slot for this build. Um, I've tried the other Tenokai mod um, that allows you to have 100% status, conditions perfection. Um, but the damage is really nice. It stacks really nicely with Arcane Fury on Saren. Um, Killing Blow, obviously, and Amalgam Organ Shatter for the heavy attacks. Weeping Wounds is on there just because it enables me to actually try and proc my only uh, status effect, which is either Impact or Toxin. I'd rather it be Toxin. That's why I have Prime Fever Strike on there. And... Um, Weeping Wounds, when, you, when you're when you around 11-12% combo count, it allows you to get that Toxin proc off, and it does damage, it does really good damage to health. Um, so, it's a weapon that is purely designed around dealing ridiculously high damage. This thing does, I think I've seen it do 89 million damage. Um, it does a roughly around 5-10 to 10 million damage uh, on against unarmored opponents. It is disgusting. It's very fun to use, and it's a giant hammer. The extra icing on top of that and the reason why i use it for this is its unique trait being a new local weapon its heavy attacks heal self and allies within 15 meters for five percent of the damage done five percent of millions of damage is full health um pretty easy it also grants 20 percent status effect resistance while equipped so when you're using it it's just going you're going to not die basically as long as you're attacking someone you won't die it's very very good um Again, you could use anything in this in this uh, weapon. Oh, on top of that, I completely forgot, it's an Incarnate weapon too. So it benefits from all of the Incarnate stuff as well, having more damage, more heavy attack wind-up speed. Um, it's just disgusting. It's a fun, disgusting giant hammer, and it's fun. Um, but as I said, you can use anything in that, in that slot, and it will do perfectly. Um, this build has... Enabled me to pretty much pick any debuff in the Netracell game mode. Um, and I have smashed the whole game mode up. There is one slight issue with the game mode itself at the moment. And I think it's enemies aren't spawning quickly enough in the zones. After you have um, singled out where it is. So you find it. You find the Netracell like, um, location. Once you've found that, it's quite hard to get enemies to come into the zone where you can build up that uh, percentage meter uh, it takes a long time i've had it runs be 10 minutes or 20 it's it's just really annoying um so they'll either fix that or maybe i'm killing enemies too quickly and they're not dying inside the zone and i'm making it worse for myself um because this build's so strong anyways that's the build um my companion is the dirager um, you can use any companion in this slot. The only reason I'm using the Dirager here is because um, it has some good CC, um, especially when using Saren. She's very squidgy. Um, you need good answers for survivability with, when you're using Saren. So using Dirager just gives you that extra bit of survivability, a lot of uh, CC that comes from it, a lot of electricity procs and things like that. So, But any companion will do. Um, another extra little tidbit is to use uh, your air support if you have the parallax ship the parallax ship is amazing for this because you can place it down you're in there for about 10 minutes you can probably place two or three of those down and it will let you find a lot of the vokers that you need for ranking up um, but yeah it's an all-round fun mission and this is the build I have again with the new Archon shards we've only touched the surface so there will be a lot more to do um, I'm looking at using uh, Banshee with the orange Archon Shards. I think that'll be really fun. Uh, I don't think she'll... Uh, in my head, I don't think she'll be able to die. But we'll see. We'll find out. Um, anyways, that is my build. And I hope you've enjoyed it and taken some inspiration for your own builds. And I will see you again soon. Thank you.